Uh, Cape Elizabeth Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, first, we'll start out with roll call. James Walsh. Here. Jack Keneally. Here. Joseph Lugliometti. I believe he called that he would not be here this evening. That's correct. That's correct. Stephen LaPlante. Here. Gib Mendelson. Here. Michael Tranfaglia. Here. We have a quorum six of seven members present this evening. First item of business is the minutes for the October 28th, 2003 meeting of the zoning board. Any comments? Hearing none, may I have a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Second. Second. Seconded. Minutes approved. All in favor? Opposed? And Jack and James will call as uh, abstention since they were not present at that meeting. First of all, I see that Michael Tranfaglia has renewed for a new three-year term for the Zoning Board. Welcome back. Glad to have you back. Uh, January of each year, we have a bit of housekeeping to take care of, and that is to elect a chair and secretary for the, for the year, in this case, 2004. And we will not do as New Hampshire does and have a lot of discussion, <laughs> caucus, primary. Uh, and entertain I'll nominate, discussion and, and. I'll nominate Jay Chapman to be chair for the coming year. Second. second. Motion's been made and seconded. All in favor? All opposed? None, thank you. I'll try to lead the board well for the coming year. Uh, second is secretary. Uh, the secretary is not a recording secretary, but it's a, a acting chairperson in the event that the chairman is not present. Uh, the current secretary is Jack Keneally. Do we have a motion for nominee for secretary? I'd like to move it, uh, Jack Nelly, be uh, nominated as a secretary. I hear a second. Second. Seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Hearing none. Congratulations, Jack. Thank you. Speech. Old business. Accept right. a speech. Accept. I'll hold it off. <laughs> we won't put the audience through that at the moment for either one of us. Uh, old business. I is actually old and new business, and that's to hear the request of Mark and Laura Morris of 53 Bowery Beach Road, tax map use 17, lot 41, for an accessory dwelling unit. Uh, the Morrises have been on our agenda previously, I believe, a couple of times, and due to preparations they needed to make and due to the Christmas holidays and that was delayed, so we're glad you're finally coming before the board. Welcome. Uh, if one of you would like to come to the microphone and present your plans, please. Please introduce yourself. I'm Laura Morris, and my husband and I would like to convert living space above our garage to be an accessory dwelling unit for my parents in the event that they need to come live with us. Both of my parents are elderly and have had significant health problems in the last two years. Um, and I will be the designated caregiver at such time that they need help. Uh, right now, everything is okay, but I, I would like to have official approval uh, for them to have a private space uh, in our home. Um, you know, rather than just sort of 
off in a room i'd like them to have an independent private space and that's why we would like to do this and thank you to bruce and laurie and matthew sturgis and everybody else in the town office who put up with me just wanted to get that in <laughs> If I may start out just asking you, your, your, your intention is for your parents. Where are they currently located? Are they living? In, they live in York, Maine. In, I'm sorry? York, York, Maine. They live like an hour away. Any questions from board members? I just have, have one question about the, um, this is a second floor situation and access for elderly parents who will obviously become even more elderly as time goes on. Is the access something of concern of yours that it's on the second floor? It is. Um, and I, I went around and around about this um, and Bruce was trying to help me sort it out. Our, our first floor actually was what I was looking at initially because there's actually everything you need for independent living is on the first floor and there is a ramp. Um, I can't remember why now. Oops. I guess I'm unprepared. Um, yeah, I alterations I think to get to the maximum allowable square footage are more possible on the second floor than on the bottom floor. Um, you wouldn't be able to cut into the structure of the bottom floor. Mm -hmm. If if we get approval with the condition that we adjust the second floor, we actually could do that. We could reduce that square feet, but it's not possible on the first floor. That That's why we can't do that. So um, that's a bridge I'd have to cross when I got to it. And, and I don't have a good answer for accessibility. I could just, just I'm dealing with an 87 year old and it is, that has become an issue with the stairs. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it does, you know, for whatever plan you have, it does limit the life of that particular uh, effort. Yep. Um, anyway, at least you've thought about it. What's the, the egress from that space? Is there any independent egress exit from that space? Um, that's, um, stairs. It's an independent. There's an, uh, it's an exit out the back. It's a separate yeah. exit. Yeah. Uh, correct. Sorry, I, I'm not clear on what egress yeah. means. Of course, the bedroom have egress windows. I noticed on the application that the number of bedrooms, number of current bedrooms is four, and the number of proposed bedrooms is also four. I'm not clear as to why that wouldn't be increasing. Wouldn't you also be creating a new bedroom in that, in that additional area? Um, they, the walls are there. They're actually there already. So we're just saying take this living space that we have and change it to accessory dwelling unit. So we don't actually have to do any construction. The space is there. The bedrooms are there. So in the main in the main home, there are three bedrooms. There are four total. Um, we use, you know, my daughter uses one, and we use one, and then there are two other bedrooms. And we would say those two would be designated to the accessory dwelling. So you have total four bedrooms in the house, including yeah. both sides. Yes. Yeah. Would you? give us the history of or the construction history of, of this property when uh, when this addition was put on and, and uh, when it was completed please yep um, it would be a year ago last October well it would be two years ago this April that we began the project um, our house had a host of problems and we ended up doing a massive overhaul. So that's all that's really left from the original house is the foundation and some interior support um, on the bottom floor of the, of the original house. Uh, everything else was gutted and upgraded and updated and brand new. Um, 
we uh, we had already because we needed a new leach field um, in 1998 I think it was mm -hmm. um, we had already upgraded our uh, leach field to accommodate a four bedroom house and saw this uh, actually you know looked ahead at that point and said someday we're going to want more space because our house is way too small to start with so we did it all at once um, and turned it into a much bigger, more pleasant place um, to be a four bedroom, you know, with the full story on the main house now on the second floor garage and then full story above the garage. The, so the, the, the garage itself is new construction, the garage in the room above is new construction as That's of spring of, you said, 2002 then? We started it in the spring. It was completed that October. Of 2002. Yes, and the second floor on the main house, the original house is also brand new construction because we basically chopped the top off of our house. And it was a story and a half cape and we chopped off that top and went up a full story. So that's all brand new. Okay. And um, <clears throat> so the, the, house, the garage or the the area that's under discussion has been completed since the fall of, yes. of 2002. What, how has that been used since that time? Um, just residentially, we, you know, occasionally, if we have visitors, they stay there. Um, I had thought, I guess it was about, it was before we started the construction project. I had thought about applying for an in-home business. I'm a soap maker, and um, you need a full kitchen for soap and I still have trouble keeping the soap out of our <laughs> out of our food and stuff. So we, I I was you know going to do an online store and really start cranking because I'd had some success um, and then changed my mind um, and so we end up having this you could actually live upstairs or downstairs and you know at the time when we were doing the construction project is when I found out that my mother had, and it was incorrect, but we didn't know, she was told she had stage four colon cancer and she'd had a heart attack about six months before. <clears throat> and she ended up having to put off her chemo, well, she elected to put off her chemotherapy because my father had a quadruple bypass. And it all happened at once. Took the wind out of my sails and um, I just decided I, you know, this space, I'm, I'm just gonna make this, you know, if I need to have them here, I want to be ready for that if that happens. And they're both, my mother does not have stage four colon cancer, but we thought that for six months, she only has stage two. And um, they're both, you know, they're both living still and, you know, still have some issues, uh, but it hasn't gotten to the point where I have to have them with me. They're 79 and 77, I think. Uh, <clears throat> From the beginning, I believe you were aware of the square footage uh, requirements for the accessory dwelling unit, is that correct? I became aware after the structure was there and Bruce came by one day and was looking at it. I told him there's a good possibility that I'll want to make this into space for my parents and he said, you've got too many square feet here by the, <clears throat> he said they go by the outside dimensions. And, um, you know, I, I wasn't thinking seriously about that at the time, but he warned me. Um, I think the walls were already there by that time. So um, what we've talked about since, um, because I've talked to Bruce about it in depth, trying to find a way to do this, um, the way the uh, upstairs is set up, there is, we're like 72 square feet over. Uh, the second bedroom is equivalent to 81 square feet, I think. Um, that that bedroom has nothing in it that's critical to someone staying there. And I asked Bruce, you know, if we had to, we could close that off. And he said, well, you know, that doesn't seem real practical. You, it'd be, make more sense to make it accessible to you from the outside, but inaccessible from the inside. So that's, that would be our backup proposal. I know you can't, <clears throat> I can't adjust this one that way, but if, if it just isn't possible to approve what's there, um, my next step would be to make that accessible from the outside, turn the existing window to a door. Of course, we'd have to bring the deck over, 
turn the window to a door, and turn the inside door to a wall, and then that becomes our space, because there's no, there's no common wall with our house. We couldn't just make a door into our house um, from where it's located. So that, that way we'd get rid of 81 square feet and we would fall under the maximum. Now, you know, obviously we don't, we don't want to do that <laughs> because it means more construction and more money, but, you know, Bruce has done a really good job directing me and telling me, you know, and I, I even own a copy of the zoning book. Um, so I'm, you know, I'm aware of what the rules are. Well, we are faced with um, looking at your application, uh, and we are looking at your application as an application for an accessory dwelling unit, not as a variance, just as a simple yeah. fact of accessory dwelling unit, which in many ways is very straightforward, the rules and uh, or the requirements. And one of the requirements is that the proposed floor area of the accessory dwelling unit, or ADU, I'll refer to it if that's okay, uh, shall not be less than 300 square feet nor more than 600 square feet. Uh, your proposed ADU is 672 feet. The other concern that we have or that I have as a board member is that is the, the next regulation, and that is the percent of the floor area dedicated to the ADU cannot exceed 25% of the total floor area of the structure. And you, you in your application and in a number of your, your drawings and references, uh, you referred to the total living area as 2,400 square feet. 25% of that would again be 600, and that apparently just coincidental that the maximum square footage for the ADU is, is exactly the same as the square uh, foot percentage of the total dwelling. Uh, in both of those cases, uh, you exceed the, the, the uh, regulations for the uh, application for the accessory dwelling unit. Uh, you mentioned that earlier, that, that uh, you were aware of that. That is uh, an issue that we're faced with, uh, that where we have to apply the, the rules and regulations. It's, it's not in our jurisdiction to override those rules and regulations uh, or the requirements for the accessory dwelling unit as, as a board. And again, you're not applying for a variance, you're applying under the standards of the zoning ordinance. So in those two cases, uh, you exceed, exceed the requirement. In the, um, when you say two cases, I... 25% um, and Oh, okay, okay, by both of those. I see what you're saying, if yeah. We, your total square footage is 2,400 square feet, as, as you indicated in your application. Yeah. 25% of that, which is the maximum that can be allotted or dedicated to the accessory dwelling unit, mm -hmm. cannot exceed 25%. Mm -hmm. Therefore, 25% or one-fourth of 2,400 would be the yep. 600. Yep. Uh, so there are two <clears throat> obvious points in the application that, that this fails on uh, as we stand right now. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, it's not, as your application sits, it does not meet, meet the minimum requirement. So we, we uh, really have no, uh, no reason to address it any further mm -hmm. as your application stands. Now, the, uh, and you mentioned that you had considered that. Do you have any other thoughts along that line? Um, we, <clears throat> once again, Bruce did a real good job and sort of prepared me. Um, like I said, our, you know, one backup plan is to remove some of the square feet that exists for use in ADU and make that our usage and so that reduces the unit. Um, I didn't really come up with a way, it, we, I went through the whole process of thinking I was going to apply for a variance. Um, and I actually misunderstood the instructions and went through this big research project and 
found all these apartments in Cape that are over 600 square feet and there are no variances on file. None of those people are my 10 closest neighbors. So that's the part I misunderstood. Um, I, not, there's nothing in the zoning book that tells me that you would, um, that you would o not overlook it, that's a bad choice of words, but that you would allow this given my sort of unique spot. I'm not in a neighborhood where I can find 10 neighbors that have a unit. Um, across the street, I've got a hotel, farm fields, you know, I've got like one, two residential neighbors. Well, no, I have the people in back too, but um, it's it, because I couldn't meet the standard for a variance, I couldn't apply for one. And uh, we just wanted to take a chance that you would say, well, you know, it, these rules fit neatly with, you know, certain circumstances, and ours ours aren't those. Um, and we just wanted to take a chance that we could have you, because we have to have your approval to do it, that you would be able to approve it as it is. If not, we'll we'll have to backtrack. Uh, unfortunately, Ms. Mrs. Morris, it, um, <clears throat> our, our hands are even tied beyond that. Uh, Section 1975B uh, actually uh, prohibits uh, a variance for an, when you're applying for an accessory dwelling unit. So uh, even if you were applying for a variance, the ordinance itself prohibits our, our granting a, a variance. Um, I, I guess in everything I read, it's I must have read it wrong, but it sounded like the zoning board always had the ability to make the decision. You know what I mean? It, that's how I read it. That it's always up to individual, uh, the, the board, not necessarily the strict guidelines. But I might have read well, it it's, wrong. Well, it's, it's up to the board to grant variances where the ordinance allows for that. But... Uh, what section are you reading? I'm looking at, at uh, 19 I guess we never saw dash 7 dash 5B. Okay. Page, page Which says the following requirements shall be in addition to other requirements of the zoning ordinance, and then it lists the requirements for an accessory dwelling unit. The very next sentence says no accessory no accessory dwelling unit is permitted where a variance is also required. Well, I think that means that if you if you needed a setback variance, I, that's my been my interpretation of that. But that's not probably never neither here nor there because they couldn't apply for variance anyway. So I mean, right. they didn't. So I I think um, and th those words are familiar because I read that sentence many times. But um, but you know that's a point well taken. It may mean it may be all inclusive. I never looked at it from that. Oh, I think so. A variance yeah. uh, yep. means, right. means things besides setbacks. I, I, I might be... The variance from the ordinance, yeah. I might be tempted to go home and read the thing that made me misinterpret that and then follow up with you and show you what I read, but that will take me some time. Um, that, that being said, though, I, I think um, certainly for myself and, and I suspect for other members of this board, uh, we like to do what we could to see this happen for you. Mm -hmm. And uh, if, if uh, uh, there, there does seem to be some alternative, albeit not the best, mm -hmm. uh, that you have already suggested, that you could um, uh, cordon off an area in this, in this space that, that you want to use for the accessory dwelling unit. And, and by doing that, you can then come into compliance with the ordinance. Yeah. What uh, could you tell me um, so that we can um, keep construction to a minimum and all that? What would be acceptable for me getting rid of that space? My first thing I said to Bruce was, just turn that door into a wall. And, you know, he thought that didn't sound too, too likely and might not even meet code to have this sort of blocked in, walled up space, empty space in a home where there's heating pipes and electrical wires and stuff. Um, what would you require 
for me to make that space unusable if if that works for the code enforcement officer it certainly works for me ok so i'll just i would just work with him on that ok i think it's as simple as the applicant doing away with that small bedroom area and and uh... it could, it could rest that on my shoulder to see that it's either done by blocking it off and in from the inside and then having access from the inside on a common hallway or having a separate exit or maybe bridging across but i could follow up on that if if the board pleasure was to allow approval without that bedroom being part of this and i could assure that that work gets done in in a relatively short term before occupancy so you say in that hallway Put an interior door that separates. Well, I'm saying that there's several ways to approach that. Okay. But the board could approve it without that bedroom, and I could take it from there. Okay. If the board's comfortable with that. Let me let me suggest something about that second bedroom, um, and ask if this would work through. Suppose there was a doorway, a, a door rather, interior door across that hall, where that little. I guess it's part of the foyer right now uh, in the interior hallway there. If a door went into that, into the second bedroom from there, the other door was blocked off further down from the hallway. So now it's a storage area that's part of their use, and it has no opening into the accessory dwelling unit, and mm -hmm. that really encloses it off. Did that work? Yep. You also tied to plumbing. Is that the plumbing is all roughed in and everything for this? It's all, yeah. it's all finished. It's all, all finished space. Yep. So they have an occupancy permit currently? They have an space? occupancy permit for an extension of the single family dwelling. Okay. I questioned the kitchen one when I went to give occupancy and it was, she was going to use that for a soap business. I did have some reservations, so I wrote right on the occupancy that could not be used for anything other than extension of the single family mm. without prior approval from the board for and that's, that's your unit. That's right, when I found out about the, um, the situation my parents were in, <coughs> happened right then. I don't know if you remember, but I went into some detail about mm. it. So this, um, this conditional use as an ADU, it's, it's tied to close immediate family. No. no. That's right. We've, we've visited Anyone that has in earlier. A close personal relationship with the owners. And that was deliberately done um, to allow a friend. Why, I don't know, but I... Right. I, and I remember I, visiting, visiting that on an earlier I case. researched the history, talked to the people who wrote, and that was the intent. Now, I've lost the place in the book, but earlier I spotted that if it's not used as a condition as a ADU for a period of one year the conditional use permit expires is that correct I read that too and I guess that raises the question I have is that if your parents if it were to be granted and your parents don't move in within a space of a year wouldn't that bring about the issue that the conditional use permit would expire Where, where did you read that? Yeah, I've, I've since gone through the book and I've misplaced it, but I'll continue to look for it. I think that is so, Bruce. <clears throat> I think it is, it's a 1955. <clears throat> oh. And it, I may have misinterpreted, perhaps. I think that's exactly what it says. I don't think that it was intent to to disallow an accessory dwelling unit because it isn't used for a certain time, no more than it is for a single family dwelling unit. That's on page to, to not be used if you don't if you live it. I mean, we have a non-conforming section that says that 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 if if the use in a particular district is discontinued for a, a, one year, then it then it then it can't be resurrected. But history, history does not include residential. 
nobody in their right mind would, would because you went to Florida for a year or you got a drug transfer and your, and your house was empty for a year and it was a non-performing use, would close that house down as a residential use. It's, it's simply, it's kind of like an unspoken law, I guess. I mean, it, it's not exempt, but it's, nobody takes a, a, single, a residential use away from somebody. Okay. So I think it's the same situation. Page 53. <clears throat> um, says that the conditional use shall expire if the owner... Yep. No, I know what it says. So Isn't does that, it that title? Does not apply to this kind of situation, Richard? <clears throat> Once again, the way that I read it, it needs to be enacted upon within the period of year and if its use ceases for a year, then the uh, conditional use permit also expires. Well, then the, the that, 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 that's fine. She gets her approval. If she gets approval tonight, is not provided for a year, she's gonna come back and get another approval, I guess. Um, it puts me in the position of, I, I move my I parents in without approval. I don't see it as an issue. To, or, you know what like I mean? A, like a, I would a business that that, that gets approval based on, on that particular business. And, and you know? you're saying that there's no, there's no prohibition against the renewal of that approval, so no. it's only, a, right. it's only a, a slight inconvenience <clears throat> on, on the Mars. And it's also like we don't, we're not going to be doing any construction, well, except for the change, but if this whole project hadn't been done yet and we were going to do construction, you'd, you know, it seems to me it's tied to that too. You know what I mean? You got to kind of get things done, and you can't like be waiting forever to do something. But it's already done in our case. So, do you have any time frame at all regarding your parents? Um, my mother is in, you know, reasonable shape. Um, it's hard to tell. The nature of my father's ailment is um, he's suffering more from the what they call pump head symptoms of cardiac bypass. And um, I mean, there have been times in the last six months to a year where I didn't know if they'd be able to live under the same roof. Um, and that was a concern that I may have one parent and not the other. Um, he. Um, frankly, has hallucin hallucinations and delusions. Uh, hallucinations have subsided, but um, I don't know what's going to happen to him. The doctors say it takes a long time to get better. It's been a year and a month since his operation, uh, a little bit more than a year and two or three months, I guess. Um, he still has paranoia and delusions. and. You know, we've got to think about taking away his license and all that. And if his life changed that much, um, it would change their situation dramatically. And I could be in a position where I would have either one or both of them um, that I would need to be watching out for. If alterations are made uh, to meet the, uh, the requirements of the uh, ordinance, what what is your anticipated use? Uh, it's been completed since October of 2002, uh, and it could be some time, maybe years. What what will be the ongoing use for that? Um, we'll we will use. This and I ask that in view of, of your time frame for coming before the board now, at this time. Um, we'll continue to make it our space. Um, if it looks like, you know, if something dramatic were to happen and, um, you know, either one of my parents had a terrible setback and had to be hospitalized and it just looked like I wasn't going to have responsibility for their care, you know, I would perhaps at that point look at the in-home business again. I'm not sure. I had to, at the time, I felt put that off with what was happening with them. Um, and I just really wanted to be prepared if, if I had to be. Like I said, I don't want to move them in and then ask for your approval. I want to be prepared if I have to do that. Um, we'll, it will continue to be our space until I have to do that. So you, you said you might 
be using it as a business? Was that true? If it, it, I, the only way I'd feel comfortable applying for an in-home business is if I know I'm not going to have to have them. Um, and so, I, and I don't know when that's going to resolve. I just, at Would this point, don't know. necessitate them coming back to the board for a different use then at that point? If it's a home business, they'd have to come back. If it's a home occupation, they wouldn't, but you couldn't have the accessory dwelling unit. You can have, you can have, you can't have both. I don't know. I don't know the difference between. I think you, you and I have talked about that. And there's an application on that, so I would. Home business, you, know. you, you can have clients come. Home occupation, you can't. Okay, I don't. So, so the difference. Yeah. So her idea of possibly in the interim using it as a home occupation is incompatible with <coughs> yeah, with our she gets approval, approval tonight. For accessory dwelling unit tonight. She can't use it for home. Okay. Business. So if we approve it for an accessory dwelling unit, and I'm just trying to make it clear to you yes. so that yep. you don't sure. deviate down the wrong path. Uh, yeah. Well, she can again. certainly give that use up. Sorry? She could certainly give that use up. She, you know, if two months from now she decided to have a home business or home occupation, she could certainly give that use of his accessory unit up for that home business, home occupation. Either and through she would have to affect that change with you. Right. Or you if it was a home business. Right now it's being used for, you know, I'm not, I'm doing my soap thing in our existing kitchen on the first floor and I haven't been doing anything. I don't have clients come or anything like that. I've been doing it as a hobby and I had thought before, um, you know, Maybe I want to really, you know, go nuts with this and have the website and all that stuff. Um, that is what I put off and I'm not currently doing. So I'm not in need of having to go forward with getting official and all that stuff. I still do it as a hobby. But um, right now, you know, we just... As we, long as you're aware at this time yes. that, that if reconfiguration and if approval of the reconfiguration ensues, uh, that that would be incompatible with... Yes. Yep. Home business, home occupation, as uh, Mr. Smith just indicated. Yes. Okay. Do you, uh, then we're back to meeting the requirements of the application. Uh, do you want to try to work through that at this time? Is, is, uh, yeah. Configure? I think we'd. We'd like to know what, what direction, I mean, we, you know, <laughs> we wanted to try to <laughs> take a chance on this, but. Uh, okay. Have you given this any thought, uh, or enough thought to make a presentation, a reconfiguration presentation? Oh, I don't, I don't have, yeah, I don't have any supporting paperwork or anything like that. I mean, there, there aren't too many options for what we do up there um, for getting rid of space. I mean, that one, that one bedroom is the only thing, really, that we can get rid of. So it'll be straightforward. Well, that's what the board's asking. Are you willing to give up that space for approval tonight? Oh, I see. Or do you want to leave and decide and make changes and then come back? Um, I mean, I think it's straightforward. If you tell the board you're going to do away with that, and that's the record, and I can follow up that that's going to be a, uh, not part of the accessory dwelling unit, if the board's comfortable with that, then... I see no reason why we can't move on this. <clears throat> well, what would be the time frame required to have that completed? Well, I think we needed something in, in fairly short auto. I mean, certainly before occupancy, but you, you don't have occupancy, so that's not an issue. But I think, I think 30, 45 days to have the work done, I, I don't want to let, let it hang out there. I think mm -hmm. if that's the approval, it's got to be done and take behind us. That could. 45 days could be an issue. If we couldn't get it done in 45 days, would we go through the whole process again, put in a new application? And is that what would I have guess, to happen? I guess it's up to the board whether they even want to entertain this. I mean, I, <laughs> I, mean, I think there's some, there's some fairly easy changes here to be made. It, it is. To be made to make it work, but and I think that's simply changing the, the interior hallway so that you, a, you access that room from that hallway being a common hallway. 
Okay, so and, and we'll partition that, off that and put a, an interior lock and door or an exterior lock and door in the hallway. Okay, so and, and that, I think it's pretty simple to do, but I, I can't tell you what to do. Well, that that's a lot simpler than what I had originally thought. So I mean, <laughs> it sounds like you you well, have you, a better you, plan you, than you I do. You, you need to tell the board what you'd like to do and. and um, uh, Mr. Trent, I agree. Yeah, hello. I just, if I can go back a second, the, the, the use of this would be for parents. And the reason why they, they haven't moved in yet is because they're living independently. Yeah. And my assumption is, is that you would like to have this in capability when that was no longer so. Well, my reading of that then, Bruce, is that an accessory dwelling unit, I mean, my understanding of the definition and intent is for basically independent living mm -hmm. for but the reason it's instead of having a, a you know a, a motel someone that you know a relative and, and you you don't get into whether you're taking rent or not but it's an it's an independent living spot and i guess i think we're making a uh, what would be the difference why, why does she need to have an, uh, a conditional use permit if she's taking in family that is incapable of living independently the fact that she is asking for accessory drilling that that, that that works independently, whether that whether that's gonna happen or not is another thing. But you can't you can't have all the ingredients there without that approval. But if you had uh, I can see if, if, if your parents are coming in and they were living independently and they had their own mailing address and um <coughs> the legal residence, I guess I think it's a very fine line between taking care of sick family under your house, which I think is I would almost argue whether a conditional use permit is needed at all. Well, I mean, I, I, I guess I'm not going to argue that, but let's, what if you had two dwelling units side by side that were independent, but yet the people couldn't take care of themselves? I mean, it's the same situation. It's because it's all on the same roof. It doesn't make it any different than having two dwelling units separate. The fact of the matter is, there's two dwelling units there, and it needs to be, it needs to be have some kind of approval to keep that full kitchen. Whether they, whether they function, Right. In, independently or not, it, it, she can, Laura can move from that unit to this unit without being dependent upon the other unit. Even she may be doing the cooking, but it's still an independent unit. And I don't qualify to be considered a two-family home because I'm on less than 10 acres. So, because I asked Bruce about that. I mean, the other thing to do is take the kitchen out, take the stove and the refrigerator out. Which might be easier than blocking and, and the and then And then you don't have the issue. It's, it's now a single family, an extension. Um, I mean, if the intent is to use it for a, for a dwelling unit, though, I mean, you don't do that because right. if the intent is not to and you, don't, and you don't use it and violate, then there's no issue. So, I mean, you could take the stove and refrigerator out of the unit and, and it, I guess it wouldn't function independently at that point. I mean, we talked about that, too. Yeah, yeah. We, at least I, and we'll discuss it as a board, I, I think as a board uh, are willing to, to work with you and, and, and in this application, as long as we can get by the minimum requirements and, and we're faced with those two square footage uh, uh, areas that you do not meet. So if you are willing and can provide us with a fairly detailed explanation, not detailed, but uh, firm uh, idea of what you have in mind to meet the square footage, then we can proceed with discussion and, and mm -hmm. work with you on this. And if, if, you're, if you want to take a few minutes now to, to do that, uh, you're certainly welcome to. Okay. Uh I think since he knows more about the building part than I do, <laughs> I just need, well, I mean, need to talk. The to other you. thing to do would be, you know, you, you know if you can make the conditions that you'll get approval. Mm -hmm. If you don't want to do any changes now, mm -hmm. I know you'd like to have something pre-approved, but mm -hmm. if you find something that was working and you knew that was going to happen, you mm -hmm. come back before the board at that point saying this is the changes I've made or I'm going to make, 
mm -hmm. and get approval then because if they're not going to move in for a year you may have to come back anyway so and if you did if you took that option mm -hmm. you wouldn't have to do any changes now you could leave it alone mm -hmm. why make the changes if you don't think it's it may not happen I mean that that's another possibility I mean if you meet the standards the board's going to approve it anyways mm -hmm. and it's it sounds like to me, and they can't guarantee it. They can't. They can't say that we're going to we'll approve it six months down the road. But mm -hmm. if you meet the standards, then mm -hmm. then the board's going to give you an approval. I'm assuming. So. I think I would, um, because the idea you suggested with the interior hallway, I actually hadn't thought of that. I my idea was much more complicated, where we make an entrance from the outside, extend the deck, make a solid wall on the inside. That that is a much worse solution so just hearing yours now makes me think i haven't thought about it hard enough um and i can't say for sure we could get it done in 45 days um, about the interior situation i see i just if i knew more about what would be required i just you were saying can i interrupt for a moment yes. dr chapman do they have the opportunity to table this till next meeting it seems like they still have quite a bit to talk about as well. Uh, well we they do, they but do, but it has a, uh, you know, they, they have tabled it, I believe, two times on your own request. If they want to table it, that's, that's fine. I, I'm trying to, I was trying to, if it's as simple as saying that this is what we'll do, let's take care of it. You know, mm -hmm. let's, not, let's not carry it on. If it's it just seems like we're getting bogged. They can't decide what they want to do, then I guess they have to table it. That, that, I guess that's where I was going with it. It just seems that we're getting bogged down in pursuing the options that, as a board, we're probably not necessary uh, to participate in. Well, so it might be that they wish to come back after they've had the opportunity board, to review all their the board, options. Whether you want to table it or you want to make the change. Okay. What are the options? I, I the, the deck with the door on the okay, side. I that, was thinking frozen ground. Yep, and, and, and Bruce is saying just alter that inside hallway so that the entrance to the ADU is down the hall inside and then there's a door you go into a common hallway you take a right into the, the that area that's now a bedroom that's now a storage area for you or them both because it's it's not finished it's finished space but it's not living space and then you go through another door to get to the other unit so, we're so in other words you put a you yeah. put a door an interior door down the hallway. That's a simple change that would eliminate that space. Would we be able to get a door in there in 45 days? I think so. Don't you? So it's the it's an intern it's an uh, interior entrance. Yep. Right. If you need 60 days, Mr. Morris, I'm sure the board <laughs> yeah. at this point, yes. We're not He's talking, a busy fella. <laughs> you know, we're talking the guy can come in and put that wall up, set a door, and tape it out. Yeah. That's trips. you, Bruce. <laughs> it's minimal. Yeah. No, I didn't. I hadn't even thought that was an option. Yeah, I can't do that. Okay. Then we, we would like to say that we can get that done. I agree. And, and if you could give us 60 days, that would be good. So I understand that you will modify the internal design in an effort to meet the square footage requirements and the total percentage square footage of the proposed accessory dwelling unit so that you will designate one area, the area you were referring to as a common area that's clearly and from a construction standpoint or structural standpoint, clearly a common area accessible uh, from the exterior as a common area mm -hmm. to the primary house. Yes. Okay. Any other questions from the board? And you do agree and understand that this is purely for an accessory dwelling unit? Yes. Yep. Uh, for that use only? Yes. And 
meeting the requirements and definition of an accessory dwelling unit. Yes. <clears throat> there are no other questions. You can have a seat, please. Seeing no one else in the audience, I see that there are no comments pro or con regarding this issue. So we'll close public discussion and open up discussion to board at this time. Well, what's, so what, are we going to then delay the approval until that Bruce has a chance to inspect uh, the modifications to the construction? So I guess we can make an, a conditional approval based on. Can we do that? On. Sure. On. Do that. Okay. Board can do anything they'd like. Oh. Okay. I think that would make more more sense. That'd be cleaner. Yeah. yeah. Conditional on your inspecting that the doors have been put in and so forth. Yeah. Based on their plans presented to you and the construction taking place, and you. Yeah. But well, I'll see that the the uh, record clearly shows exactly what they did to meet the, the standard of 600 square feet. Meet the square footage standards and percentage of overall square footage. That area, even though it's not going to be living space, still be, can be considered part of the floor area for calculations. The only thing you have to take out of that is the garage area. So by eliminating 72 square feet, that bedroom, they'll, they'll be in compliance with both. Okay. So it in the future will be clearly obvious that that is a, a common space. That's correct. Okay. Board comments? I have a question. This is really mainly for my edification more than anything else. Bruce, you probably know the answer to this. Chief, it's called the attic here. Um, it, living areas we crossed out from 1,300 plus to 400 square feet. Is, is there a reason? For that? That's in, in the folder. Yeah, it's probably the last page, uh, the second last page. I've taken them all out, so I'm not sure where it fell originally. <clears throat> but it's attic space unfinished. And the original sheet had 1,362 square feet, and that's been crossed out, and it says 400 square feet. I don't know what that is. Uh, when Bruce brought to my attention that we had not enough living area, he said our uh, unfinished square feet counts that's right. if there's a floor. Right. And my husband installed 400 square feet of floor in the attic. Right. So okay. we can meet exactly. the requirement. <laughs> Okay. Where, where is access to that attic space above the proposed ADU? How is that access? That's access through a, what do you call those? Trap door. Yep. In the main, in the uh, bedroom on the left when you enter. Do you have any plans for that area above that attic area? It wasn't the, yeah. It's, it's certainly, there's certainly enough room up there, but it gets to be 300 degrees, so I don't think we ever really will use it. But it had to have a floor. It includes unfinished areas within the exterior walls. I remember talking about that now. Yep. Any other comments? Hearing none, we'll proceed to conclusions. <coughs> we'll vote on these five points. The proposed use will not create hazardous traffic conditions when added to existing and foreseeable traffic in the vicinity. All those in favor? Opposed? Number two, the proposed use will not create unsanitary conditions by reason of sewage disposal, admission to there or other aspects of its design or operation. All those in favor? Opposed? 
Ma'am. Number three, the proposed use will not adversely affect the value of adjacent property. All those in favor? Opposed? None. Number four, the proposed site plan layout is compatible with adjacent property uses and with the comprehensive plan. All those in favor? Opposed? None. Number five, the design and external appearance, appearance of any proposed building will constitute an attractive and compatible addition to its neighborhood, although it need not have a similar design appearance or architecture. All those in favor? Opposed? None. All five points have passed. <clears throat> May I have an affirmative motion? A conditional affirmative motion, please. I'll, I'll move that we vote approve the application of Mark and Laura Mars uh, for a conditional use permit for an accessory dwelling unit of approximately 600 square feet at 53 Bowery Beach Road, tax map U17, lot 41. Conditional on a modification to the drawings, uh, to the space as configured in the drawings provided with this application. That modification to be approved by Bruce Smith within 60 days, uh, ensuring that the accessory dwelling unit does in fact have 600 feet or less. Second that motion. Is 60 days the appropriate? 60 days is a long time, but well, I mean, if, if that's what they need. If we get it done sooner, shall we call you? Yes. I mean, would you recommend an appropriate time frame and construction time frame? Completion well, I, of I construction. I think it could be easily taken care of in 30 days, but. Is what? I, th I think 30 days is more than generous. Myself. To, to meet your appro design approval? I'd like to get it, instead of hanging out there, I'd like to get it taken care of. Okay, and then will you, you will put a construction requirement on that or time frame on that at which point this will be approved? Is that, this upon condition will be removed? Yeah, important guidance from the board. If, okay. if, well, I'll amend my motion to say 30 days rather than 60 days. Okay. Sounds good. Do I hear a second? Second that. All those in favor? Opposed? Zero? Thank you. Okay. Good luck. Thank you very much. You're welcome. There be no further new business. We'll move on to communications. Motion to adjourn. <laughs> uh, not there yet. Not there yet. Premature communication. Uh, a new zoning ordinance, or a, not a new, but a, an amendment, an update of the zoning ordinance was passed effective December the 10th. I think it was approved November the 10th and became effective December the 10th. So uh, we're working off of minor amendments to the zoning ordinance. Did everybody receive a copy of that? Michael, did you, the police delivered that. Did you check a door that you might not have used? Because the police delivered, hand delivered those. So if you have a door that you don't use, it may be tucked in there. If you didn't, give me a call and I'll get you another zoning ordinance. We got we had limited amount of ordinances, so I, hopefully you you'll find it over there. If not, but let me know. Okay. Sure you I can't imagine out. somebody stealing yeah. your packet, but <laughs> maybe your kids else? are reading it. Yeah. Everybody received the December 10 update. Bruce, what are the most significant amendments changed? It was basically the I remember remember. A year ago, so ago, we talked about things in the ordinance that that, that were 
being done by both the plan board and my office right. as waivers that, that really should be in the hands of the Board of Appeals. The plan board shouldn't be doing waivers because of the Perkins versus, Perkins versus uh, Town of Agunquit case. Right. We did some amendments, like there was a section where I could approve a deck of 150 square feet, half the setbacks. That's, that no longer is there. It's into the main body of each residential district where it says that a deck 150 square feet or less has a, a reduced setback of 50 percent. It also made changes to waivers that the plan board was authorized to do that they're not authorized to do anymore, such as private access ways in lieu of frontage could be approved by the plan board. They still approve private access ways, but now they, the frontage has to be made on the road serving that back lot. So it was to address the Perkins a gun quit so that we wouldn't be challenged in court. That was the main crux of the changes. Okay. Were there any things that we talked about as proposed changes that never got approved? Did you recall anything? Mm -hmm. No. All the recommendations that, that you, we talked about on the board, from the board of field standpoint okay. were changed. The term expiration date has recently uh, been modified, I noticed, in the uh, Cape Elizabeth website. Previously, the expiration date for the zoning board members showed, uh, showed up as January 1st of each year, uh, of the relevant year. For example, your expiration date showed up as January 1 of 2004. Uh, I noticed that the the town website revised that to show the expiration date as the last month, of, last day of December, so December 31st of 03. I personally uh, feel that that's much clearer. I, I thought it was a bit awkward to show an expiration date of January 1st of, of the following year and not the last day of, of this year. We checked into that and, and the uh, town council and apparently all other boards uh, do show the uh, ending date as the last date of the month of the year. Uh, we do need to make an internal vote on that. Uh, I'll read the Zoning Board of Appeals Rules and Regulation states that uh, this, uh, The board uh, shall make such rules as it deems necessary to carry out the provision of the ordinance. We can vote to amend that so that our expiration dates, uh, currently our expira expiration date shows up as January 1. I'm recommending that we uh, fall in line with the rest of the boards and show an expiration date of December the 31st. Uh, we do have the right, according to the rules, to, to make that amendment, and I propose that amendment at this time. Any comments? Minor, minor technical issue, but I think it, it, it puts us in sync with the rest of the boards, and, and it personally makes it clearer to me to see that. So I'd like to... Uh, I guess we need to do that as a formal vote. A formal vote. Uh, I recommend amending, amending our Zoning Board of Appeals Rules and Regulations, Section 1, Item A, Board Membership, uh, Senate's reading to serve without compensation for three-year terms expiring on January 1st. I'd like to change January 1st to December 31st. I hear a second. 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 All those in favor? <clears throat> Opposed? None. Uh, just as a review of the term limits, uh, so that everybody is aware, I, I was uh, not fully aware and, and looked into this. Uh, term limits for uh, board members are three years, with a man maximum of three consecutive. Uh, terms. So each appointment is for three years, and there can be up to three consecutive three year for your information. Uh, chairman of the board is 
elected for a one-year term, and there can be a maximum of two consecutive full one-year terms. So at the moment, I'm legal as for re-election. Um, how do term limits, are, how are they affected by someone who's appointed to fill an unexpired term? It, it says that you can serve two full terms, so if you finish out somebody else's, it, that's an added bonus okay. for that person. Okay. So for the three-year memberships, if you fill an un unexpired term, uh, then you're eligible for three full three-year terms. Three or two? You said two. Membership three. is three. three. I thought you were talking about the chair position. The chair is two one-year terms. Membership, okay. in general, is three three-year terms. Okay. Uh, it would apply on both. Same rule would apply, I assume, on both. And does that, filling an unexpired term, that applies to membership as well as chairman? I believe so. Okay. Uh, the main DEP, Department of Environmental Protection, called a meeting uh, through Michael McGovern, town manager, to meet with uh, town council and representation of uh, town uh, departments. Uh, Mike Morse with the DEP uh, requested a meeting in January, and we had this meeting on January the 14th, um, the letter requesting this meeting from Mr. Morse of the DEP asked for partic participation of the town council, the code enforcement officer, the planning board chair, and the zoning board of appeals chair. And on January the 14th, uh, the town council, represented by Chairman Marianne Lynch and Councillor Carol Fritz, uh, met with Bruce Smith code enforcement officer who was overall coordinator with the DEP, Maureen O'Meara, the town planner representing the planning board, and I as represented, representing the Zoning Board of Appeals chair. We met uh, basically uh, to review um, applications that had been applied for the uh, Shoreland Performance Overlay District that we have received, and I believe we presented uh, eight applications that had been, uh, had come before the board in the last four or five years, I believe, is that correct? And with the results of those, um, this was discussed and different issues were discussed. I think overall the, the meeting was favorable, according to Bruce, uh, with the main DEP. So that, that took place last week. Uh, and last item is uh, there is an ori orientation for all boards and commissions tomorrow evening, January 28th at 6 p.m. in the middle school cafeteria uh, for all new and current board and commission members have been invited. So I assume all board members received an invitation for tomorrow evening. And that's at the school cafeteria. I hope that all will be able to attend that. The next meeting is February the 24th. Uh, the school's winter break is February 16th through the 20th, so there's no conflict with that meeting. Um, that's all the business I have. Does anybody else have any? To adjourn. Second. I hear a second. <laughs> meeting adjourned.